It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. Welcome, brothers, sisters, working class heroes. This is the Rick Smith Show. Thanks so much for being here. Today on the big program, lots to get to, lots to talk about. Oh, the fun. Oh, the entertainment. Oh, the enjoyment. Um, We found out recently that um, we've got a Pennsylvania Senate candidate, Dr. Dr. Oz, who evidently thinks that the kids having sex and having kids with their cousins, not a big deal. As long as it's not your first cousin, you know, that second one, you know, I guess he grew up in an, in an environment, yeah, kissing cousins, things, okay, not not a big deal. As long as it's not your first cousin, you you do what you got to do. I uh, also found out that, uh, that, that Tr- Donald Trump actually did have the nuclear secrets that he claimed that he didn't have and stored them there at his golden palace. And uh, the weird thing is, is not a peep from the party of family values or the party of law and order. Very interesting. The silence, kind of deafening. Crickets, if you will. And why? Because, well, this is who the Republican Party is. This is who they are and their candidates. Oh, the candidates, they're fun. Uh, some some bad, some worse, some even worse than worse. And, you know, for instance, and, and this is one of those things I wanted to get to yesterday, but didn't have a chance. Because understand, I, I've i believed for years that, you know, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Greens, Libertarians, everybody kind of in the same, you know, heading towards the same destination. We want to get to the same kind of place. I'm I'm questioning that in a huge way. The kind of the kind of world conservatives want to move us towards. Um, frightening. And I look at this the state senator from South Carolina. Uh, yeah, South Carolina. Uh, a guy named Richard Cash. Uh, he again, you know, now go back to Dr. Oz. You know, hey, it's okay as long as you're not first cousins. Uh, this this Senator Cash, uh, he's making the case that 16 and 17 year olds are mature enough to get married as long as they've got parental consent. But oddly enough, not mature enough to access birth control, even with parental consent. <laughs> um, it, it's it's just weird, and and I guess you have to you have to hear the clip, and I, I got to play this because. South Carolina Senator Brad Hudo uh, asks Senator Cash about his position on contraception. And, well, I think I think you just got to let the good senator from from South Carolina speak for himself. They're not mature enough to be taught about contraception in school and they're not mature enough to receive contraception on their parents health plan and they're not mature enough to get contraception from the health department, but they are mature enough to get married? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's a fair question, and I'm happy to answer it. I think my position uh, when this has come up before is um, if a 16 or 17-year-old, certainly if they have their parental consent and, and they wish to get married and they're parents approve it then um correct i don't have a problem with that but you just moved to table a bill that required parental consent to get birth control pills on the parents health plan where's the logic well the logic is i believe sex belongs within marriage because sex leads to children and children needs parents And so I'm not in favor of the state paying for contraceptives for unmarried children. Uh, I don't think that's a good policy. 
I think children come from sex, and, and children need mommy and a daddy, and that means marriage. So mom and dad can give consent to get you married at 16, but not to put you on birth control. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yep, 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 that's it. Yeah, yep. <laughs> um, yeah. For a second, thought it was uh, Herschel Walker's kind of, and this, this is kind of the Republican positions on things. Let them talk and let them tell you what they twistedly believe. Um, now, again, South Carolina, another state. Remember, remember, Republicans said, no, no, it's going to be a state's issue and we're going to protect the rights of mothers and, and all this stuff. Um, South Carolina is now a state that has removed exemptions for rape and incest uh, from 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 uh, women's abortive care. I mean, this is again. <laughs> listen to who they say they are and who they're who they are is, is kind of frightening. Now, again, all white guys. All uh, good God fearing Christian white guys. And the question becomes is what kind of an America do we want? Uh, and like I said, I, th I think this direction, this election is going to show us the direction that we're going. But, you know, I've said for a while that, you know, I used to believe that we were all, we all wanted the same destination. It was just different paths, different policies, different ideas. Not, not so much. So for me, you know, where is this going to take us? Now, yesterday I got taken to task by a listener over my assertion that that Reagan uh, is responsible for the demise of this country, especially the demise of the working class. Um, he still buys the myth that that you know Reagan single-handedly took down the Soviets and is responsible for sliced bread or whatever. Uh, still buys that myth of the sainted Reagan, and and I, as I was going through this this back and forth, you know. My problem is I'm not a true believer in, in any one. There are no absolute there are no absolute heroes in any in any world. I don't even agree with myself a hundred percent of the time. So I don't understand blind loyalty. I don't understand this kind of this 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 blind faith. Uh, I understand making lives better. I want people's lives to get better. That's my North Star. Uh, when I was a kid growing up in the projects, I think about that kid growing up in that same place I lived and what opportunities and chances that kid's going to have. And I want them to have the same, if not better, than I had. It's pretty simple. But I look at this this kind of division that's going on. And I'm curious your thoughts. one 416 rick one 416 7425 are you concerned about the direction that we're going based on this blind faith ideology, this kind of command and control of individual liberty and lives, while saying it's about individual liberty and lives? For instance, federal judge in Texas, story broke today, uh, has declared it unconstitutional for the Affordable Care Act to require insurance and employers to offer the the HIV prevention drugs as part of, of their plans, claiming that somehow this violates Christian religious liberty. Well, kind of bizarre, but this is what it is. It's not like it's not like, you know, only gay people get HIV. You know, I think we're past that. So I'm not sure what the, the what the rationale here is, other than just this this control. And you listen to these 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 ideologues, and the stuff that they throw is is crazy. I mean, I go back to Dr. Oz. A clip has been unearthed of Dr. Oz speaking, uh, saying that you know the uninsured don't have a right to health, which is a, kind of a twisted thing to say. Um, but he, but people should be given the ability to crawl their way back out of the abyss of being uninsured. And I'm going, uh, am, am I confusing something here? Now, his solution is we should have giant festivals uh, for health care and people can get 15 minute physicals. You know, the, the, the TV guy. This is the grand health care plan. This is the plan of how we're going to help people get the care that they need big big festivals you can come into the big pop tent and you know turn your head and cough and all that and the weird thing and i go back to this i used to believe this that we wanted the same things you know good jobs safe neighborhoods you know quality schools health care education 
Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, that stuff. But sadly, you know, I, I, I come back to this. The more I, I, I talk to Trump supporters, the more I talk to Republicans and Republican candidates, uh, the more I, I don't think we share a similar future. And this is where elections matter. This is where getting out and voting matters. You know, for years, people were telling me, you know, Rick, you're crazy. You know, Roe is, is decided law. They're, they're not going to overturn Roe. They just use it for fundraising and for riling people up and getting people all lathered up in the panties. I'm going, no, they get the chance they're going to do it. And they're going to go even further. Contraception is coming. And yet here we are. Here we are in this moment where conservatives are going in that route. And I, I keep asking myself, what happened to get government out of my life? What happened to smaller, less intrusive government? Now, we both know that was all nonsense. But the reality is, is this election matters. And matters in huge ways on how it's going to affect not just us in this moment, but the future generations of this country. What kind of a place do we want to leave? Now, the right does a masterful job of scaring people into, you know, Joe Biden and socialism. And you go, I'm not seeing that. By all means, share. I'd love to hear the thoughts on, on what is socialism, uh, especially from people who collect Social Security. I usually get, and, and those are the people who usually yell that the most because they're the, the most afraid of it, uh, the ones who are secure with Social Security and Medicare. But, you know, I'm not too far away from the place where the guy yelled at Arlen Specter, get your government hands off my Social Security. Quick note, Social Security is a government run program, just for those who don't know. <laughs> just got to throw that out there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. 1-866-416-RICK, 1-866-416-7425. Uh, what direction are we going? Are you concerned about the future? A uh, quick break, right back with your thoughts after this. Stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're working people from the top. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania, to the auto factories of Michigan, to the modern makers movement, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good-paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. So today, President Obama and the First Lady were in D.C. for the official unfurling of the the, the presidential portraits. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, kind of took a while, don't you think? You know, it's about six years since he's been out of office, um, and it, it, it then made the question, you know, when when Trump and Melania, you know, when when it's time for theirs, because look, whether you like it or not going to have to have a portrait there. Uh, what should that look like now? You know, interestingly, you know, it's not, and not surprisingly, folks sent, you know, images on Twitter of, you know, him looking like a clown um, and all of that. And I've, I've had some some racy comments about uh, what, what Melania's picture should look like. But, you know, ultimately, you know, I, I want them to have their, their, their picture there. It should. Uh, maybe with an asterisk somewhere near uh, twice impeached and, you know, some of the problems there. But this is one of those things where I think that it has to be done relatively soon. And I think it would be, you know, incumbent on, on, on President Biden to move forward on that, make sure that that happens. It should be who we are, that institutions move forward and maintain, even if we don't agree. And look, I, I don't I don't agree with almost anything that Trump did couple of policies I've given him, you know, the credit he's due on, uh, you know, the, the renegotiation of NAFTA, I thought was not horrible. Uh, he got a lot of input from labor and a lot of input from Democrats. And and that, you know, that bipartisanship did help move it forward. Uh, the, the tariffs on China, I give him credit for that, even though it wasn't part of a bigger plan that you should have engaged the rest of the world around. 
But those are things that I agreed with and have always said that. What's interesting to me is I can't find a Republican right now who's going to give Joe Biden the credit that, that I think he deserves in this moment. And I look at this uh, this op-ed you know, written by Paul Krugman. And, you know, I, I, I like Krugman. I think he's a I think he's a bright guy. I think the, the stories are uh, his, his articles are important. Uh, but interesting, interesting column on. And look, this will make the Trump cult really, really angry because he asked the question, you know, has Biden economics been good for workers? And the answer is, you know, yes. Uh, jobs have been created. We've seen unemployment plummet. Uh, we've seen, you know, people being able to, to to change jobs. We've seen organizing happening. There's there's a lot of good stuff. And Krugman concludes that if you take food and energy out of the equation, since those are global commodities and things that, are, that no president really has absolute control over, when you take those out, that you know, workers have done have done well under this president. And and that inequality has begun to shrink. Now, again, the alligator jaw is still wide open, but inequality is is shrinking because a lot of the, the wage gains have been for the folks at the bottom that we're, we're buoying up the bottom, which for me, again, one of these moments where we should be raising the minimum wage so that that floor doesn't get to drop out at some point down the road, because we know how much, you know, you know people love to give you know, like, hey, you're you're essential and you're a frontline hero and here's a bonus and then claw it right back. Now, Krugman says that, you know, Biden economics could lead to a revitalization of the labor movement in this country, because, yes, there's a lot of organizing going on. There's a lot of 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 energy around around coming together. And for me, this is this is the exciting part of of where we are. Because this, I think, is the thing that we can we can we can agree on. While we may not ever agree on on same sex marriage or transgender issues, which are thrown out there specifically to divide and tear us apart, this should be one of those things that we we do come together on. Because as Krugman does say, you know, unions do raise wages. That's their job, especially among you know less skilled, low wage workers. I point to this article over at the Washington Post uh, titled 4,000 Google Cafeteria Workers Quietly Unionized During the Pandemic. And they pointed out that, and as I've said all along, union job, better life, that these workers at these, these Google offices, um, these, these cafeteria workers, their wages have gone up sufficiently. And as, as is pointed out, uh, in the piece that the 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 average unionized cafeteria worker at Google makes 24 bucks an hour, pays virtually nothing for their health care and has access to retirement, a retirement plan. Um, whereas the the non-union folks like Sodexo, who I guess is just being organized down in uh, in Atlanta at the Google facility there. They make 15 bucks an hour and pay through the nose for health care and have no pension whatsoever. Again, back to this, you know, this union job, better life frame. This is what organizing does. And they finished up the article talking about this guy, Richard Ramirez, who a 33 year old guy who works at this um, you know, works in the food, you know, the food chain there, the cafeteria chain uh, in um I believe it's in Seattle, where he now makes, you know, 27 bucks an hour, has free health care, and doesn't think about, you know, can I take my kids to the doctor? Um, doesn't think about, you know, are, are they going to be okay? Uh, and he, he said in the article, he said, you know, he thought he had it good. He was making 20 bucks an hour at Google. Uh, and that was 11 bucks more than he made at a job previously. But he didn't have any money for rent. He didn't have any money for, for anything. And he was commuting, you know, three hours back and forth to work, all this stuff. And because of the union, he, he got a livable wage. And, you know, he said, you know, since we unionized, I bought a home. And that was basically only possible because we unionized. And for me, that's the message. 
you know, I've been asked, you know, why are you such a strong supporter? I go, because, you know, when I was a kid, I watched lives get better. People, people got union jobs, food at the end of the month. Immediately better. Kids got, you know, bikes, you know, better clothing, you know, better opportunities, bought a second ad car, eventually moved out, up and out of that environment entirely. Lives got better. This is the message that needs to be repeatedly put out there. Uh, out of the entire article, which was, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the facts and figures and statistics and all this stuff. The part that grabbed me, this guy's story, the fact that through his work, he has health security. Doesn't worry about his kids getting sick. Doesn't worry about if the kids fall and broke, bro you know, broken arm, uh, playing on the monkey bars. Because uh, it has health security, has some retirement security. He's not not worried about you know down the road, but also makes enough money that can buy a house, can build for the future. I mean, that is that not the American dream? Is that not? What we were we were told again that work hard, play by the rules, get ahead frame. And is that not the the common direction I think the vast majority of us want to go? Now I go back to the stuff we, I talked about earlier. You know the fact that they divide us on all of these issues that that aren't germane to our everyday lives. You know, same sex marriage. I don't care about. And this is the weird part. I, I, I spend a lot of my day in the I don't care department. Um, I don't care if two people get married. Wish them the best. Good, good, good for you. Doesn't matter to me at all. Why we have an entire political movement in this country are fixated on what other people are doing is beyond me. The transgender issue. I, I don't care. I want people to lead the best life that they can. Pursue their happiness. God bless them. But does it matter to me what they do? No. And it shouldn't matter to anybody else because no one's making you do it either. But when did we become fixated on this stuff? You know, as I said, in my workplace 30 years ago, we, we dealt with the transgender issue. Guy went away. He worked there for years. We knew, knew him, you know. Uh, he came back. He came back. He was a she. Nobody cared. Person came, did their job. They went home at the end of the day. It wasn't a big deal. Why now are these the things that, that we focus on? Well, because the powers to be know that this rips us apart. It divides us. It keeps us pitted against each other. And not walking where we can together on issues where we should, like making lives better. Uh, the wealth class understands this. And while they may not be able to pay half the working class to murder the other half as easily as they've done in the past, oh, they can pit us against each other. And this is the this is the battleground of where they do it. I wish we would go back to the time where, my, as my grandfather said, don't worry about me, worry about yourself. This is one of those issues. Love to hear your thoughts. Email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Quick break. Right back. We've been farming the same farm for three generations, and it's just always been where I've wanted to be. Any farmer you talk to in Montana will tell you that the climate is definitely changing. The weather is way more extreme. We went from the wettest year we've ever had to this year with the worst drought we've had since the 80s. We have done everything we can to keep water going, but it got close to running out. Farmers can't afford the cost of climate change. Congress has to get this done. So, AP story caught my attention today. Headline, Michael Flynn, from government insider to holy warrior. <laughs> um, and I think they left out a whole lot in between there. Uh, but it's interesting. You know, he's now unabashedly claiming that this should be a Christian nationalist country, that, you know, it's all about everything should be about Christianity and, you know, that kind of holy war thinking uh, and cashing in. I mean, you know, look, religion's where the money's at, man. Uh, become a religious charlatan and, and spew the nonsense and the cash will flow. To me, part of that, but also I think I think the guy's flipping off his rocker, but here to share some thoughts on the holy warrior aspect 
I've asked our good friend Rich Ojeda to come talk with us. Rich is the national spokesperson for No Dem Left Behind. Rich, thanks for taking time for us. Hi, anytime, Rick. You know, I always enjoy it. So what do you think uh, from uh, from from government insider? You know, he was you know national security advisor, part of that, uh, to now Christian warrior. Well, you know, I, I think what you said, you know, it kind of it kind of makes me think that he's trying to lean towards becoming the next televangelist, you know, because everybody knows how lucrative that is in the United States of America. And I could see him with dollar signs in his eyes. Uh, the mere fact of what this guy has done since getting out of the military is absolutely just sickening, you know, and, and like, you know, one of the things that Colin Powell said before his, before his, uh, you know, passing was that the army should bring uh, Michael Flynn back on active duty and court martial him for the crimes that he has committed. And it just seems like he gets worse and worse and worse. And it's it's just it's quite scary, but it's also kind of scary when you think that a person like that actually climbed all the way to the level of three star general in the United States military. And, you know, I, I, I like to think that the leaders in our military, you know, that you don't get to that level unless you have your stuff wired tight, solid, you know, a good leader. And, uh, you know, seeing Michael Flynn, you know, I know that, you know, he, he's a rarity. But it just amazes me that he was able to climb as high as he did in the in the military. Now, what do you say to the people, though, Rich, who go, look, you know, we, we now see this leaked email of, of the Oath Keepers, you know, membership list. A lot of them are, are military. A lot of them are law enforcement that, you know, the military and law enforcement now, you know, maybe more than at any point in our history, you know, in, infiltrated by these kind of groups and this kind of thinking. Yeah. And, and they need to be absolutely purged, purged from the military, purged from the police force, purged from, you know, running for office. You know, all of these people, none of these people deserve uh, to, to, to serve in leadership roles. Uh, I mean, you know, if, if, if you were in the military and you were home on leave and you hung out with some of these guys, you know, uh, you know, I, 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 I get it. You know, maybe maybe because th- I can remember Oath Keepers in my hometown. And there was a group of them, and they would always go and, and serve as the security for some of the festivals and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, after seeing what took place on January the 6th, knowing how involved they were, we're getting ready to watch uh, Elmer Fudd, you know, their leader, who shot his eye out on a daggone gun range. We're about to see him get, uh, you know, uh, 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 prosecuted. And, you know, I think now that we've seen all that and we know exactly what the Oath Keepers are about, then that's a different story. Some of these people need to be absolutely purged. But even if they're like young, young soldiers, they had better absolutely be willing to, you know, 100 percent denounce this organization. But what do you say to the people who look at, you know, the three percenters, the Oath Keepers, you know, the Minutemen, all of these all of these militia groups and for years have been saying this is who they are. You know, why are we now surprised that they proved what people have been saying all these years? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's easy to see these people and see how dangerous they are and listen to their 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 words that they spread and 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 the propaganda that they spread. But I mean, on January 6th was this. January 6th was no more. It was no longer talking. You know, anybody can run their pie hole all they want. But when you actually put action to it, then that's a different story. It kicked it up another notch. And now seeing what the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters did when they participated in January 6th, that's a different story. Now, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they are a criminal entity and they need to be treated as period. Yeah, no, I, again, the leader of the uh, the Oath Keepers on trial going to be tr- tried to fire his lawyers. And, and I, as I when I saw it, I, I think I mentioned this the other day, uh, it seems to me just an attempt to prolong the inevitable, which he's going to be tried and hopefully convicted. Uh, the judge was having none of it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, they're going to play this BS games, uh, you know, just like your Steve Bannons and people like that. You know, they always think that they're one step of everybody and the truth is they're one step ahead of the poorly educated base 
but anybody that's got their head on straight knows and can see them coming a mile away. Uh, let's, you know, at the end of the day, these people are going down. I believe that the leaders of the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, I, I, I look to, I look for at least 15 years. That's my thoughts. Wow, and and that would be helpful. Uh, now you, you you brought up Steve Bannon. Um, he, he expected Thursday uh, for him to be indicted. Yeah, I mean, you know, and this was part of the 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 whole stealing from the wall and that's one of the things that I, always bothers me is you have all these people out here that are trump loyalists that you know don't realize donald trump had 14 days between the time they stormed the capitol until the time he left office he didn't even try to pardon those people that stormed the capitol for him because he didn't care about them. He pardoned Roger Stone. He pardoned Manafort. He pardoned Bannon. You know, he pardoned uh, 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 Flynn. Those are the types of people that he pardoned. You know, he didn't care about the actual people that stormed the Capitol for him. And that's how it is. So, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I just wish more people would wake up and see the writing on the wall because that's what this is. I want to see Steve Bannon go down. I, I don't want to see 30 days. You know, I mean, I know that on two on two two uh, uh, parts of his crime, those can those can go up to a year each. I want to see him get a year for every one of them. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sick and tired of watching people like that get a slap on the wrist and average everyday people, other people, absolutely go down. Yeah, I'm right there with you. You're listening to the Rick Smith Show. We're Rich Ojeda. Rich is the national spokesperson for No Dems Left Behind. No Dems Left Behind dot com. The website. We'll get links out on social media. I can check out the work that they do. Now, uh, again, this is one of these moments where you look at uh, the Trump administration, one of the greatest criminal enterprises I think that's ever taken office, and we're we're starting to see, I think, a number of. Uh, of, of people being on trial, how come we haven't really seen the the kind of rolling over that I was hoping to expect? Uh, you know, the rats really trying to save themselves. Do they still believe that in 24 he's going to become president and pardon the whole lot of them? No, I think that uh, I think that it's all about timing right now. You know, I think that everybody, for the most part, wants DeSantis. But they know that DeSantis cannot claim to run for the presidency until Donald Trump is put away and denied to be able to run for the presidency. Because first and foremost, if as long as Donald Trump is out there claiming he's running, nobody can run against him. Because if they do, then they have to they have to go against Trump, and no Republican can win without Trump's base. So what they're hoping is is they're hoping that Donald Trump is going to be disqualified here soon, which he should be. And then somebody like DeSantis is going to say, hey, don't worry about it. You know, if I win in 2024, I'll take care of you, Donald Trump. And then Donald Trump will then tell his base, support Ron DeSantis. And that's the, that's the only perfect scenario for them. Anything other than that is a no-go. If they don't arrest Donald Trump and he's a 2024 candidate, Donald Trump will never be able to win. He couldn't win the popular vote in this last race. And make no mistake about it, there's a lot of Republicans that are not voting for Donald Trump anymore, to include many that died during COVID. Yeah. Now, now look, you, you just had the, the FBI find you know, documents that, uh, according to the Washington Post and other reports, describing foreign militaries, you know, their their military defenses, uh, nuclear capabilities, found this at the Golden Palace there at Mar-a-Lago, among a whole bunch of other really closely held secrets. And, you know, I'm, I don't know the justification of why you think you could take it. I don't know how he got all this stuff. And I don't know how you justify there is. this president having them at a freaking country club. There's n in no world is this. There, same. The no, there is no justification for that. It doesn't work like that. And, you know, I held a top secret security clearance. And if I a fraction of that, I would have lost my military career and my freedom. And understand that, you know, okay, why are the Republicans, why are Fox News, OAN, and Newsmax not answering the question as to why did he have those documents? First and foremost, anybody who's held a top secret security clearance knows none of that stuff was declassified because it has to be declassified and then it has to have declassified stamped across it, which it did not have. It was not declassified. That's just how it is. And you got to think, why would Donald Trump have in his possession 
the nuclear capabilities of another country unless he was going to try and make them have to pay, you know, uh, for him to not give it to somebody or he was going to sell it to their enemies. You know, I tell people all the time it was to, to sell or to trade. Those are the only two reasons why he had all those documents down there in Mar-a-Lago. And we now don't even know what has been seen, what has been photographed, what has been sent to, to, to other countries out there. We have no clue. And the truth is, is you can't put it past Donald Trump. He's a selfish, egotistical, narcissist, absolute sack is what he is. And he's. I hope and pray that this man goes down. And we need to deal with him. Don't worry about the repercussions. Let these poorly educated educated knuckleheads rise up if they want to. They'll get put down too, but we got to squash this quick. Yeah, now now it does bring up the question, you know, Jared Kushner got $2 billion from the Saudis. Maybe? Yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, you also have to wonder, did Jared Kushner give them the information where Khashoggi was going to be before they snatched him up and murdered him? I mean, we have no clue. And and you can't put it past none of these people. These people don't care about our country. They only care about one thing, and that's themselves, period. Now, you said you had national security clearance. You know, how hard is it to get a hold of these documents and, and, and you know, the, the process? Because I'm still trying to figure out how he gathered all of this stuff. I mean, three. this is a lot yeah, of stuff, yeah. Rich. All of that is a major investigation. First and foremost, those documents dealing with another nation's nuclear capabilities, it is illegal for them to even be out of a skiff, period. And you got to understand that, you know, a top secret security clearance does not give you the ability to look at those type of documents. Those documents are only seen by literally probably four or five people, period. That's it. You know, I mean, just because you have a top secret security clearance doesn't mean that you get to look at certain things that are not, you know, part of what you do. So, you know, it, how did those documents get from the skiff into those boxes? How did those boxes get from Washington, D.C. to Mar-a-Lago? Because make no mistake about it, anything that is secret, top secret classified, it cannot move in, in a regular moving truck. And I believe that's exactly what happened. That alone is a crime. You know, I mean, all of this stuff for anybody, you know, to get a security clearance, even a secret, it takes forever. It's months of paperwork and you got to go back and you've got to remember every person's name. They sent people to my hometown and talked to my middle school teachers and asked them, could Richard Ojeda be trusted with, with, you know, secret information? That's how that's the level that they go to when you get a, when you get a clearance like this. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it is, it's, it is just hard to imagine, you know, Jared Kushner and Ivanka didn't even go through the process. Donald Trump told them, give them a clearance when they did not go through the process. They didn't go through the three months of, of, of paperwork. They didn't do any of that. Donald Trump basically gave them a pass. Now, but let, let's finish up on this, because the argument that I'm getting from my friends on the right is none of this stuff applies because he was president. He he could wave the magic wand, Rich. It all no. goes away because he waved no, the you can't. magic wand. No, that's not true. That is not true. You don't wave a magic wand over documents. You have to get the documents declassified. And let me tell you something. There are documents that Donald Trump cannot declassify. Just because he's a president of the United States does not mean he's above the law. That's what our country is all about. And you don't get to just say, I'm declassifying this information. You cannot declassify nuclear capabilities. You can't do it. And Donald Trump is now saying that. And, of course, his base is going to do everything in their power. But imagine this. Could you imagine what would happen if Hillary Clinton would have been found in possession of a top-secret document they would have went absolute crazy. Remember, they had four years to find Hunter's laptop and Hillary's email, and they failed miserably. But, you know, that's the same crowd right now that acts as if Donald Trump didn't do anything wrong. Make no mistake about it. Those, those were the ones that were screaming lock her up the entire time. And it's absolute garbage. No, I'm right there with you. Rich, as always, great stuff. Appreciate the time, man. Keep up the keep up the passion. Uh, brother, I appreciate you, man. Our good friend Rich Ojeda. Make sure you check out the website, no Dems Left Beyond, no Dem Left Behind.com. We'll get links out on social media. I can take a look at that. 
Uh, quick break. Right back. Stick around. It doesn't happen like we think it does. No one rolls the tanks. No armies meet in pitched battle. It happens quietly, little by little. And because so many think it can't happen, it does happen. Little by little, the rules change. It doesn't seem shocking or sudden. And that's the point. Fewer places to vote, longer lines. Don't worry, they say. We're just improving the system. They hope we won't notice the rules are changing because they lost the last election. They hope we just won't care enough to stop them. They believe they can take America away from us, and we won't even notice. We know who they are. We know what they want. The question is, who are we? Do we let them get away with it, or do we fight? Democracy is on the ballot. Vote while your vote still counts. The Lincoln Project is responsible for the content of this advertising. So Rita sent me an email during the break. She writes, Rick, in response to all these draconian laws being passed in red states to ban abortion and control women's bodies, if women decided to refuse to have sex as a way to protest and prevent forced pregnancy, I bet right-wing Republicans would then pass laws to decriminalize rape. Um, I, I don't disagree, but you know, look at a state like Ohio, where if you're married, there's no such thing as rape. Um, I'm, I'm not. You, you can look this up. Um, they've already done that, so to speak. So there's no withholding. Sorry, uh, but I, I get the point. You know, there it, it is about the power and the control, and this is where I keep saying, you know, listen, pay attention. Um, if you've got daughters, listen, pay attention. Um, you know, I've said I've said this in the past. You know, I could live in conservative world as a as a white as a white guy. Um, simply. But, you know, I do have daughters and they would have to live under the kind of draconian laws that, that keep getting 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 passed in these these places. It's kind of it's, it's kind of frightening. And I worry about the, the future of this country for my daughters. I worry about what they, they're going to have to encounter uh, from from these people. It's, it's frightening. Uh, very, very frightening stuff. Uh, let's quick go to the phones. We've got Christopher from Chicago on line one. Christopher, how are you today? Hi, Rick. How are you today? I'm good. What's on your mind? Hey, your friend Rich was just on, and he said if they found classified documents on Hillary's server, James Comey's on TV saying they did. So they did find them. Now, if you remember and you go back, uh, those were classified after the fact, after they were sent. Top secret classified. Those were. I mean, you can watch the, the video of James Comey. No, no, I've seen it, it and, you know, and I've also found the invest, I've also seen the, the 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 report that that they came out with. Uh, if she did this, well, why did is she not? It. Hold on, stop. If she did this, why is she not in jail? Because why during the Washington four years that Trump was president and had the the DOJ had Billy Barr there for him, had the FBI, Chris, Christopher Ray, his guy, why did they during those four years not? Indict, try, and convict her. Because, in my opinion, it's okay. a big cabal, and they all watch out for each other. Oh, they're so, never going to put any of them in jail. And None this of is, them. This ever. is where you and I probably they would care agree. Less normally. about you. Uh, this is where we probably would normally would agree. But I, I think that these what Trump has done has gotten so many people outraged that something has to be done. Uh, what did he do that got so many people outraged? Exactly. He's got nuclear what? secrets a... in. Chris, Chris, come on. <laughs> okay, an anonymous source. Again, once again, an anonymous source is saying this. When you can prove to me that that's what they have, then I might get on board with you. Would you but believe that? Right now, Hold on. Okay, fly. so you're, you're going to say that if that's the case, you're you're on you're on that, and you would you would agree that's, with that Trump should be tried and, and convicted. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I just want to I want to get you on the record, Chris. I want to get you on the record, Chris, of saying that if if that is true, and and, and it looks like the okay. DOJ is moving that direction, all, you're going you're going to go okay. you're going to come you're going to go along. Just yes or no answer. Know, this is this is there's no there, there's no verbiage. There's no back and forth. Yes or no. Wait, there's there's no. I mean, the FBI has proof to lie. No, no, no you see, you, you keep you keep filibustering. You're not answering the question. 
The question is very simple. Why would I say yes? Very to that simple. They're untrustworthy. If, if, they're untrustworthy. Right. Why would I believe them? There you go. Okay. That's so, the truth. So the, the, you're going to believe the nothing. They lie to a there's no court. point. In, there's no point in going any further with it then. No matter what comes out, Why no matter James what Coleman is, is presented, Why did... no matter what you're saying is, no matter what is presented, you're not going to believe no. it, and you're immovable. And I get that, Chris. Okay. No, if uh, that is no, that's what you just said. You said you don't evidence. believe them, if, and it, you're. I get it, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, why would I trust the FBI? Why? I trust why? our judicial system because uh, if we don't, you we do. we don't have you do. the same people we that have put black left. people in jail for all those years. That system you trust. You can't have it both ways. You can't say that they put uh, uh, innocent black people in jail for years and then say you trust us. That. Uh, I mean, how could you have? So, what do we have? What do we have if we if we don't have a judicial system that we can trust? We have nothing. In my, this is just my opinion, Rick. Okay. We need to get rid of all of them. Vote for a new person, whoever your representative. Put a new Democrat in. Put a new Republican in. They're all corrupt. They don't care about us, the people anymore. None of them. That's what I keep trying to tell everybody. They don't care about you and I. They don't. You know, you think Democrats care about the working man, John Kerry? Nancy Pelosi cares about the working man more than Mitch McConnell? None of them do. They don't care about you and I. They care the pocket. That's it. No, I, I, my opinion. No, this is why this is why I hope people will get out in November and vote. Uh, I appreciate the call, man. Thanks. I come back to this point, and, and this is where i got to wrap this up. Without without a judicial system that we can have some faith in, and look, it's got problems. Whenever you've got people involved in anything, you got problems. Uh, but if, if we're in a position where we don't believe anything that comes out of our judicial system, um, we've got bigger problems than than just one orange guy. Uh, just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours. You can email me at rick at the rick smith show dot com. Uh, if you miss any portion of the program, make sure you grab the podcast. Always there, always available, just there for you. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. Right back. Stick around. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. There you go, Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of the team committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Check out our website, ricksmithshow.com. Questions, comments, something on your mind, you can email me, rick, at thericksmithshow.com. I've got a couple of emails I wanted to, to jump into, uh, caught caught my attention. And if you want to email me, rick at thericksmithshow.com, I do answer all emails. And then sometimes we get them here on the air. Uh, no name, just an email address. Uh, rick, you're... Teamster caller yesterday talked about a labor's violent past, which most people don't really know anything about. I love your labor history. And two, uh, how do we get labor education into the schools? Been, been asking about that for, for a very long time. Uh, something that we should teach, actual history. Actually, what happened? Um, you know, Wisconsin has a, a labor history component to their education system. Uh, I think it's a, a, a quarter you know, sometime in high school, uh, where you learn about, you know, the struggles, the battles, the fights, the, you know, the labor wars that happened in this country. Uh, and I say that that, that component, and I'm surprised that the Republicans, and maybe they have, if my listeners in Wisconsin want to chime in and let me know. Um, it's, you know, back in 2011, when you had the huge uprising of, you know, everyone going to the Capitol, um, that was cited as one of the the things that they they hearkened back to their education and and understanding how important uh, labor organizing is and 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 standing up in the face of fighting for labor rights. So when Scott Walker at the time, you know, through Act Ten was trying to and eventually did, you know, basically screw over all the state workers and you know did a whole bunch of really really terrible things that didn't help the state and didn't certainly didn't help workers. Help the rich people, though. And, and that's what it was meant to do. Um, but, you know, all of those 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 TAAs from from the University of Wisconsin, Madison, who started that uprising, that's what they hearkened back to. 
Uh, so yeah, we need we need labor education. It's part of why we do labor history into. Uh, it was part of the reason that we decided that it was important to remember that stuff because I'll tell you, even you know, as much as I like to think I know, there's always more. Uh, it's it's quite it's quite remarkable. Uh, another email, Rick, love the show and the work you do. You had a Trump caller yesterday talking about unions. I'm curious your thoughts on his assertion that unions killed people and his belief that the movie Hoffa was real. Well, the movie Hoffa was, eh, there were some liberties. Uh, I remember I had I had interviewed uh, uh, former President uh, Jim Hoffa uh, about his father and about that and about the movie. And, and, and no, no, uh, they they were they, they did push back on it. Uh, and I do find the movie entertaining. I find it interesting. Uh, now there are stories that, that that kind of stuff did happen. My grandfather told stories of, of of people doing things that they weren't proud of. But when you're put in desperate situations, when you're in desperate conditions, desperate people do desperate things. And, and that's where I'm going to leave that. Do I know that that, that unions killed people? Uh, I, I think there, there was the mine worker story. Uh, anytime you've got people doing things, you've got people doing things, man. Uh, and if we're going to go down that path, you know, compare, you know, what what's corporate America done? You know, how many people did they did they take out over the years? So history is what it is. People fighting for 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 their opportunities, and again, history we should be learning an unvarnished history. Uh, that yeah, there was there was there was some stuff that went on. Um, that simple. Now, question becomes. In this moment, learning our, our history, do we want to have a desperate working class? Do we want to have people who have nothing left to lose? And we're getting there. Uh, you listen to a lot of the, you know, the, the people who are organizing right now in, in large numbers. They're almost to the point where there's nothing to lose. There's no hope and opportunity. That idea that we talk about in the program all the time, work hard, play by the rules, get ahead. Um, that get ahead part is really important to that equation. And too many people, not, not, it's, it's not yet, not, not yet there for them. Uh, James writes, got another email uh, talking about my interview with Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Uh, said that he loved the discussion about the uh, the Fast Food Act in California. Uh, hope that you know the plight of workers and, and the ability to, to do better. The part that caught my attention is he, he said that you know we're cut we're we're coming in the first generation of Americans who for the majority have no pension savings for their retirement. Uh, ask presently what sixty year old adults uh, who have paid their mortgage who put their kids through college what they have in their four hundred one ks. He says the ones that I have asked have anywhere between twenty and sixty thousand dollars to last potentially the next twenty years, and this is what I've been saying for a while. Um, we're heading towards a retirement crisis because there's going to be people my age and a little bit older who are who are heading into retirement with nothing. You know, the average four hundred one k. You know, they say something like twenty thousand dollars because well, we we changed that defined benefit union pension because we allowed unions to get busted up. Uh, and they sold us on this idea that, hey, we can all be millionaires. We can all have have you know million dollar 401ks. And I remember the first time uh, an employer told me that and years ago, I started a place and go, you're going to have the option of a defined benefit or the defined contribution. You could choose at the end. And, uh, and, and if you work here 30 years, you're going to have a million dollars. You're going to be a millionaire. And I'm going, the only way they're going to let a dump truck driver have a million dollars if a loaf of bread you need to, a wheelbarrow to pay for. Uh, you need a wheelbarrow full of cash to pay for. Uh, because they're, the powers to be just aren't going to allow someone to have that. And you look at the number of crashes on Wall Street and the, the amount of, of, of resources they've screwed working people out of. Uh, now, am I against savings? No, I save myself. I, I put money into, into retirement accounts and, and things as, as, as everyone should. But because of my union, I still have a defined benefit pension that when I retire, I'm going to get this is what we're going to get. And I want that security for every working person. This is, again, as as a working class, something we should be talking about 
not just whispering about something we should be demanding once again, that kind of security that, again, the idea that if you work hard, you play by the rules, that, that you get ahead. It seems pretty simple to me. It seems, well, logical. And seems like something we had better figure out how to get to at some point. Because look, you know, there's a generation of workers. You want to see you want to see angry people? Wait till they get to the end, and there's 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 nothing there, and they're working till they're dying. Now look, Ron Johnson's got an idea. You don't need to you don't need to retire. You can just work all the way to the end. You just won't have to pay taxes at the end, but but keep working. Yeah, that's it, because that's where conservative ideology wants to take us. You spend your golden years working a crummy job for, for low wages. There you go. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here next time. You miss any portion of the program, make sure you grab the podcast. Thanks for being here. You've been listening to The Rick Smith Show. Email Rick, Email Rick. at rick at the ricksmithshow.com.